Chair of the Presidential Task Force, Honorable Ministers, Gentlemen of the Press. Um, my comments will be very brief. Uh, last week I mentioned that we are working on new uh, case management guidelines. So we have now published the third version of our case management guidelines on the NCDC COVID-19 website. Um, like I said, there has been new science emerging about the duration of infectivity of uh, individual patients, one that themselves infected, which led to the WHO issuing new clinical guidelines. We then convened uh, colleagues across uh, the organization, across uh, the Federal Ministry of Health with the uh, case management lead, the Department of Hospital Services, in the case uh, in the Federal Ministry of Health, as, long, as well as other colleagues with whom we work, uh, to review our guidelines and issue new guidelines uh, for the country, of course adapting it uh, to local circumstances. Now the key thing is that the management of COVID-19 remains primarily supportive. Um, we don't have any treatment so far that has any sh proven impact on mobility. So the five general areas of management, uh, supportive uh, management of the symptoms the individual has, uh, managing whatever pre-existing conditions, uh, supplemental oxygen therapy to different extents, a treatment of bacterial infection. So very often when you have a viral infection, you are liable or you are susceptible to a superimposed bacterial infection and ensuring that patients are well nourished and well hydrated. So in practical terms, what does this mean? Um, one of the major changes that has happened is the discharge criteria. Now, while these uh, guidelines are obviously primarily targeted at physicians managing patients, um, it's important that patients themselves know and people know because this is a disease that really we're all involved in collectively learning in real time and managing ourselves and managing society. So the two critical uh, groups of patients are symptomatic patients and asymptomatic patients. So for symptomatic patients, they may now be discharged 10 days after symptom onset, at least 10 days after symptom onset, and at least three days without symptoms. So if you're symptomatic, you can be discharged if you have had three days without symptoms in addition to at least 10 days of symptoms. Of course, if your symptoms last for longer, we will wait for longer while Manage, managing you supportively, like I said earlier. If you're asymptomatic, we can discharge you. You can be discharged 14 days after your first PCR positive test. So we no longer have to wait for a negative test to discharge. You can be discharged 14 days after your first positive with confidence that you can go home, that you're no longer infective, and you're not at risk to, you're not putting your family, your friends, or anyone else at risk if you're asymptomatic. So these have come out of uh, science. We're confident on its impact. Change is difficult because we have been saying you have to have a negative test. So even though we've published these uh, results, many physicians are still hesitating to use them, but uh, we can assure them, uh, 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 assure everyone managing cases that 14 days after, in fact, 10 days is what the evidence says, but we've added 14 days to make it a, a neat two weeks for people to then implement uh, discharge for patients that are asymptomatic. In addition, we have um, also removed the use of antivirals from our treatment guidelines. Like uh, the Honorable Minister just said, the trials for chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine will go on, and we have no problem with that. But we are asking that we restrict the use of these medicines to those trial settings and not use them casually around the country. So if you want to, uh, let's restrict the use of chloroquine, hydro hydroxychloroquine, and all the other antivirals previously in our 
uh, our guidelines to context where clinical trials are going on so that we don't use things that we're not sure about um, their use. So that's the second major change. The third one is more for us. We've clarified how we define a death from COVID-19 so that the reporting of this is more straightforward and standardized across uh, the country. So in conclusion, um, these new guidelines are on our website. We have already distributed them to all commissioners of health, all CMDs of tertiary hospitals, all state epidemiologists, all incident managers across the country. But we know we can't reach everyone, and we have to reach as many people as possible. So we're really encouraging all the physicians uh, watching this to download those new guidelines. We, we don't print massive copies of them because this is a new disease and it's likely that we will keep learning. This is the third version in three months. So we have not spent a lot of money printing guidelines. We advise you download them from the website. You can print them for your own hospital, but don't print too many. Uh, we will or print as many as you need in your own context. Uh, we will keep uh, reviewing, uh, not just us, but the global community. Everybody is learning at the same time and offering uh, Nigeria the best evidence possible and the best support they need to manage cases. So I really want to thank everybody that has been part of the review process, especially uh, the Director of Hospital Services, uh, my sister, Dr. Debbie Abebe Impe of the Federal Ministry of Health, and many other friends, collaborators who worked tirelessly uh, to get this document out on time so we can use it to uh, manage our patients more effectively. Thank you very much.